What's going on everyone, my name is AB Frank, but just call me Alex in the comments, and welcome to the bookish report where I talk a lot about gas lamp horror and gas lamp fantasy, so that's stuff like Frankenstein and the woman in black and uh, things like that, so if that's anything you might be interested in, then consider subscribing. Now today I'm carrying on with my series of reading Edgar Allan Poe right from the beginning, from this uh, leather bound Barnes and Noble copy, it's episode six I believe now and I'm on to the Duke de la Malay or de Lamla, I don't know how you say it and this book so here's the thing I I was reading this thinking what the fuck is this all about and when I finished it I thought what the fuck was that all about now why did I think that I hear you ask because half of it's written in fucking French so I didn't even know what half of it was so the thing with Poe sometimes he can write really long sentences that are like broken up with a dash and then a middle third to a sentence and then another dash and then the final third are sometimes broken up with commas and they're quite long and sometimes hard to read that was sort of the case in this story but it was partly written in French as well which made it even harder to read thankfully it was only like two pages so uh, there was only one page of French that I had to struggle through Un je oui and so I still don't know what it's about well I do now because I've just got up uh, like a summary on Wikipedia which I shall read now uh, The Duke de la Malay is a humorous short story by American writer Edgar Allan Poe first published in the Philadelphia Saturday Courier on March the 3rd 1832 so it's like 189 years old <laughs> And it was subsequently revised a number of times by the author. So the plot summary then. The Duke de la Malay dies while dining on an ortolan, ortolan and finds himself in hell, an apartment filled with various works of art that has a window overlooking a fiery landscape. Face to face with Satan, the Duke manages to avoid damnation by cheating him at a game of cards. God. And so the analysis part... There is two sentences, two sentences here. The story is intended as a satire on the works of Nathaniel Parker Willis. Sentence two. The epigraph is from William Cowper's poem, The Task and Reads, and stepped at once into a cooler climb. So I've literally got nothing else to add on this story. Still don't know what it's about. Didn't really get it. Didn't connect with it. Didn't like it. Will never reread it will have forgotten about it by the time I've turned the camera off. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.